congratulations and welcome to uh, St. John's International Women's Film Festival. I am Dan Foley. I am a local filmmaker and I have the absolute pleasure of uh, introducing and uh, speaking with uh, star Finnery Steve of the incredible film before, uh, during and after, along with uh, co-directors Steve Kunkin and Jack Lures and producer Katie Hyde. And also you might notice that Steve and Katie both also act in the film, which was like, oh wait now, you're in the film and like there's so many hats going on here and you guys are like a super team. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like incredible. I auditioned, so I had... but they wouldn't let me be in it. <laughs> no way. You were like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jack, what happened? Yeah. Why, why did you get that provider or something? <laughs> Um, anyways, I just want to say it's such an incredible film. I really felt it was such a truthful, like honest portrayal of this woman just trying to um, discover her own inner strength. And, you know, as a woman in her 40s, I just, I, I felt myself reflected on the screen. And I just really want to say congratulations on a wonderful film. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> Um, so, Finnery, why did you want to tell this story? Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm primarily an actor. I'd never um, written anything before. And I just, um, I've always wanted to write. I've been obsessed with the idea of writing and have been just terrified to try. And, um, and this, when, but I also didn't really necessarily have a story that needed to be told. Um, and then my life sort of, fell apart <laughs> and I was like, in time, this might be the thing I hope to have courage to uh, to try to put pen to paper. And uh, I, I wasn't, I had, in, in order to actually get it down, I, I had to tell myself that no one would ever see it, that I was just gonna experiment and see if I could put this down. And um, and then the more I, the more I experimented with it, I realized I, I was invited to be a part of a, a writer's group with some really incredible writers and I, and I was, underestimating you know I was sort of saying like oh I'm not really a writer I'm just you know and then I, my mentor finally said you know he's like you know Finnerty, you have to stop saying that because it's insulting to us because you're incredibly talented and also you know this is you know this is an, a wonderful story and um and I was it turns out I was sharing it in pieces so they said you have us riveted because we you're sharing it in an order that feels like a divorce it's chaotic we're like trying to put the pieces together and I didn't really initially think that's what it was going to be I was just trying to get the story out of me and um so then the more I played with it the more I realized that that was that what we had to sort of find instead of a traditional narrative we had to kind of find a like an emotional linearity of of this character and what it meant to sort of move forward um but I'll let the guys talk more about that because there, there was a lot we had to do in terms of the bookends because really the you know the film is all memory so how do you how do you play with pieces of memory when technically you're on the, the back side of it and you know um so that was a challenge and it, that's one of the things that took us a little while to kind of really put together but um i would say that and and tone were the two sort of biggest challenges for us but um I'll let them talk. yeah in terms of like that writing process um I mean, I'm sure, like you said, you first started where it was just kind of like, I guess, part of your grieving process in a way, like you were just kind of like letting it out. Like, did you start like for, for coming from, you know, moving from acting to writing? Was it more like just writing scenes and moments or, you know, like where you didn't really approach it as like, you know, you guys saved the cat and then you just wrote a screenplay, right? Like it was like, you know, can you just talk a bit about that writing process? Sure. You know, I think, um, you know, because it was a, per it was a personal story that I wrote um, and I, there's just certain memories that I that would keep coming back and I would sort of depending on where I was emotionally and my growth the memory would change so I was fascinated with this idea of what is truth and you know and my end of the truth you know because there's sort of like the actual truth of what happened and then there's your memory of it and then how time changes that memory depending on whether you were moving forward or backwards. And I was fascinated with this idea of being able to try to, um, to 
to take these key moments that I would replay over and over and look for answers and, and have that come from a woman who was already sort of on her way to being okay. Um, but those were the, those were the memories, good and bad, that, that would sort of circle back in my memory, you know, that I would sort of like, well, if this is true, then how could that have been true also? And so I was, I, I was fascinated with this idea of putting a beautiful memory right up against a, a bad memory and how that one does not necessarily make the other not true, you know? Um, so that's what I, that's what I tried to do, but there were a handful of memories that I kept sort of replaying. And Jenny has a memory that's her favorite memory um, that she, you know, that she clung to as being the thing that she wanted to fight for and her favorite memory of, of them David ended up, he knew that it was something important to her and, and, and stepped on it and crushed it in a way that um, uh, I, 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 and the, the authorship of like who gets to own the memory and like how in that one moment that favorite memory was crushed um, and being able to write about it. And, you know, obviously this is, you know, based on my marriage, but it's not like, you know, but there are, there are certain things that are very, very true. And, and to be able to, um, to sort of reclaim it as, as my story. And um, I don't know, I'm sort of rambling a little bit, but. No, no, I think it's great. And I, no, I just love the nonlinear storytelling style and about how that was that moment with um, David on the boat when he talked about, is that what you're talking about the memory where he doesn't, he, he says that he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he would have kept going on that yeah. boat. And then I just love how that was booked in at the end where we really kind of discover that, you know, David isn't really like the bad guy. That's, that's what I loved about the film, that there's just so much humanity in it. Like, I think it's very easy to have, you know, he's done an, an unlikable thing, right? He's, he's cheated on Jenny. So it's very easy to paint him as the villain or the bad guy. And, you know, that, but I found that there's so much uh, complexity and humanity in, in all, the, in, in the relationship and, and, and in the betrayal of even, of all the men, like even Clark, you know what I mean? But they're, everyone's just kind of lost and trying to figure shit out. And I yeah. think that's what was so great about the film that you know really resonated with me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the Clark scene, I also wanted to show like how easy it is to be the other woman or to, you know, so I'm, thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so, um, how did you as a team come together? Again, we have, you know, you guys wearing a lot of different hats, moving from like acting to directing, from being a colorist to directing, like how, how did you all kind of come together? It was all Finnerty, basically. I mean, um, Finnerty knew uh, me and Steve um, and Jack, of course, because Jack and I are married, if that's not some big, um, uh, Secret. Secret, but there it is. Uh, Jack and I are married, and we've worked together before as a team, as a director and producer uh, on a film. And so, and Finnerty was well aware of that. And then Finnerty had her own relationship with Steve um, as well. And so, uh, really, Finnerty brought together this whole team. Um, we called it the Dream Team because it was a really that's what I was going to say. Well, it was an un it was an unconventional team, you know, to bring together two guys who had never met each other um who uh you know and asked them to co-direct a movie it was really kind of out outlandish and and wild um and so we all um kind of listened to her and to her reasons for it um and for sure they each brought their own um skill set uh, and experience but also thank god they each brought their own uh, humility and kindness and politeness and willingness to work with each other um, because we really never had a problem uh, with this arrangement uh, of this of this co-directorship um, and uh, yeah so the four of us uh, from from moment one from from it being being a you know 90 pages on on paper uh, to making it into a film of course there are many um, people along the way that we have to thank. Uh, Elizabeth, our executive producer, would be one of them who really should be on this call uh, right now, but, um, and many others, but um, the four of us really began the journey together as you know, co-directors who had never met and were going to embark on this journey together as directors at Finnerty, as a star, writer, 
a producer, um, you know, first time writer, first time producer, and, and embarking on that journey on her, on her own as well. Um, it was really kind of kismet and it worked really well together because I think we all just came with our own experience and we came with a lot of humility and collaboration, um, mm -hmm. which felt like wonderful the whole time, you know, cause we were like inventing it as we went, who would do what and what felt right. Um, and so, yeah. Well, clearly it worked, <laughs> you know, clearly having co the co-directing team pulled it off. So kudos to you guys. <laughs> but I think the question is, how did you end up, and it's probably the elephant in the room, how did you end up with, you know, first of all, co-directors, but two male co-directors, like well, for you, you know, I'm not trying to poke anyone at this point, I think it's, you know, why was that a good fit for you? Um, you know, for, it really came down to, I will be totally honest, initially, I, I just assumed it would be, I would have a female director. I was just sure of that. And so I was seeking that out and, um, and even, um, you know, was partnering with somebody that I had worked with before and because of her schedule and everything too, it did not look like it was going to work out. Um, and, um, Right around that time, I because I think Katie knew that 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 I the train was leaving the station a little bit with, and then when that did not happen, she was like, "We're dear friends. I'm just going to throw this out. You know, I love the script, and I don't mean to be put words in your mouth, Katie. Tell me if I'm wrong, but she was sort of like, <laughs> "We'd love to throw our hat in the ring. Please don't feel pressure, but we love it, and we'd love to be able to help you." And um, around that time, I had reached out to uh, my dear friend Jen Thompson, who happens to be married to Steve. She's an incredible. Um, theater director that I work with. And, um, and I had asked her to reach out to um, a female, amazing female director. And she's like, I will absolutely do that. And she goes, she goes, no pressure, no pressure, but are you open to a male director? And I was like, I am, because I knew because of our limited budget that it was gonna have to be friends. You know, it was like, it was gonna yeah. be that because it was just what, what we had. And um, I said, absolutely, who are you thinking? She said, Steve, and I said, Oh, awesome. Yeah. So, um, so I let them both know that I was kind of, you know, narrowing it down. And I was like, how am I going to make this decision? I mean, it was, I would, I'm like, this is like, they're, they're incredible men and friends and so different, but yet like I could have made it. I, maybe, I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know that I could have, it feels like it had to be this team. I don't know how to describe it, but I, I, so I start Googling, you know, co-directors and if people are like, don't do it, it's a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> um, unless they're making Your, your a computer exploded when it yeah. said co-director. Everything yeah. is, if you do not do it for film, it's not going to work. And everything in my gut was like, I have to convince them that this would be a good idea. Because first of all, I just know they're separate from talent. They're both like amazing men and amazing guys and there's not a lot of ego other than just they're really good at what they do artists they're both both amazing artists like and in their so, way. yeah yeah so then like what they brought to the table they had such incredible strengths but also a lot of overlap you know so i was like oh i feel like if there was a way i could give it so i said let's just have a drink have a drink we don't even have to talk it because at first i think they're i'll let them just tell their side of it but <laughs> Um, it was but, pretty much for me. As soon as I saw Steve's face, I was in love. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I immediately knew that this was going to work. Yeah. So it's just like he's just incredibly, you know, handsome. We are, and we also <laughs> clearly both have very amazing, strong women in our lives, <laughs> <laughs> and we're and we're very good at listening. And we're like, we're not going. Our our desire is not to appropriate the story. It was to facilitate, like. Finn having an experience to try to get this out, both as Finnerty and as Jenny, as this character. And I mean, I'll, I'll speak for me because I know Jack and I have talked about this before, but you know, there was, I've spent a lot of time in, in my life and career on the other side of the camera. And I felt like I had all of these skills and ideas about how I would talk with other actors and, and help Finn in terms of, of uh, taking this quilt of ideas and memories that she had and making them manifest for Jenny's journey. Um, mm -hmm. And I was just overjoyed to know that 
at the at the offset that I was having as my partner was this incredible uh, artist, technician, visualist who knew the whole part of the process that I didn't really have a tremendous amount of experience with. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a photographer and um, and Jack happens to have a great affinity with actors. So I think we started with a kind of like, the way this is gonna work is I'll kind of take this half and Jack will take this half and then we'll get each other wet and you know in, in the pool a little bit in each other's stuff and give each other a chance to, to drive the car a little bit. And mm -hmm. just once you get to know Jack and hopefully when Jack got to know me, it just was, that was not, we both, it became like duo brainus. We just kind of, we kind of just went and we went with the idea that we wanted to make something um, that was bigger than the sum of its parts. And we had a, a whole lot of good parts, so. I agree. And something you said earlier, Deanne, was just about, you know, affinity when you were writing this script, it was kind of sort of, you know, in a way, going to be somewhat of a closure for you and that part of your life, you know, and I hope that that has become true for you. And, you know, and, you know, that was a conversation that Steve and I had many times. It's like, you know, how to honor the closure and, you know, what she actually experienced and also to translate into a movie, you know, that everybody's going to want to watch and that makes sense and everything. So, you know, I, I agree. And having those conversations with Steve and stuff, it was just, we just hit it off and we were both on the same page immediately. And it worked out fantastically. Surprisingly, I often say too, I was like, you know, at the first idea of hearing it, I was what you were saying too, you know, you look it up on the internet, you're like, don't do it. And you kind of don't even want to think about it. But as soon as we met, you know, I, I felt like, we were very much in the same world and we got along fantastically and both eager to do it. And the script was excellent and it worked out wonderfully. So. Yeah, they're both just very kind and very talented. And that's really what it boils down to is that they, they, share, they share the experience willingly and they brought their own experience and allowed that for the other the whole way through. And it was just a, like a joy to watch. And for Finnerty and I, we could concentrate on the on the producing without ever having to tend to this relationship. It was, it was awesome. It was really great. I will say it's a little bit like, oh, sorry, go. No, no, Steve, go, go. I was, I was, I was just gonna say, it's, you know, I, I picked this up from, uh, from the play dates I have with my daughter, which is, it, don't do odd numbers. Make it like even numbers. It's, it's just so much more helpful. So I was like, the fact that there were four of us was like, yeah. that was amazing. If there were yeah. three of us. Boys, and, two girls, two producers, yeah. two directors. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. That, that's a square. great rule. I'm going to use it. <laughs> write that up in the internet, Steve. Yeah, yeah. hold on. It's <laughs> All right, well, this has already been worth it. This is great. I will um, say when it comes to, um, like, yeah. in terms of, what, what I didn't anticipate, you know, I did dream that this would be what it, what it was and it was more than that. But I will say even in terms of, you know, in some of the festivals that we looked into and like, what does it mean to be, you know, female lead, like female led production. And so some of that, you know, everybody's idea of that is, is different. Like, you know, even different festivals will say like the lead character must be a female, you know, or female identified. Mm -hmm. You know, and so there, the, and then some people say it has to be directed by a woman, it has to be written and you know, there's all these different rules. And, and, um, and it, it was interesting to hear, I don't remember the panel now, I wish, it might've been like an older TIFF panel, but they were talking about like gender balance too, of just having, you know, balance. And so uh, what I didn't anticipate was that, yes, this is Jenny's story, but also, you know, you know, the guys would have their conversation with Jeremy too. And it was important to, for this film not to, yes, it is Jenny's story, but to have also a sense of, um, uh, I don't wanna put words in, not, not necessarily like the, the, the male voice, but also just like where we are in the story about maybe the guy's side of, this, of the story. And, and it was interesting. And I know that the guys would sometimes take Jeremy aside and give him a note and I'd be like, what, what, you know, it's like, it's not up to you, it doesn't matter. I'm like, but I wrote it, you know, and they're like, no, this is, you know, and it's true, like that, so that was interesting to me, like to have that, and I, it felt like it worked. I felt like this is not a film that will just be for women. Um, it, no. It's really balanced and fair, even on, for David's character, and I think that has a lot to do 
with having the balance, frankly, um, uh, and having the guys sort of repeat back to me of like, hey, Finn, this is where we are. Just a reminder, story-wise, I know you're super hooked in emotionally here, but we actually need her to be a little stronger because of this or that. And I don't know, and it, it, I, I think it, it had more benefits than I even realized. It's just in terms of having like um, male and female voices in the, in the. I definitely agree. I know from the first festival, even somebody asked, you know, like, oh, I would love to see the movie of, you know, of what the story would be David's oh, side. But David's I feel movie, like, yeah. yeah, what David's movie. But however, I feel like David was definitely well represented. In, but, you know, it is from the point of view of the, you know, Jenny. of Jenny. And so it just kind of like made sense, you know, but I feel like riddled throughout, you still see where David is coming from. You know, there's no like question about kind of how, where things went, why they happened. You know, you're seeing it from Jenny's POV. However, you do still retain David's yeah. and yeah. emotion of it and, and why it went the way it did. Yeah. Well, I just love that non-linear uh, storytelling that you have, like, you know, this flood of memories that are, like you said, are, you know, they bang, bang up against each other, these, like, strong, like, emotional scenes, and then these, like, hilarious, sweet scenes, and there's, so there's, you know, the drama and the comedy and how that, that's so blended together, but it's never, and I think that's why you still feel, you know, you get to see all sides of these characters are like fully realized. It doesn't feel like you just get to see, even though it's from Jenny's perspective and her is her point of view and so strongly rooted in that, you still get to, you know, see, I, I still feel like the humanity of, David. of, of, yeah. of, David's, of David's journey. Isn't that a uniquely feminine perspective to be able to see those sides? I mean, I feel like, I mean, not to get general, mm -hmm. but like, isn't that uniquely feminine to be able to lend like, grace to the other side you know what I mean like I feel like that's that's too part of like what it means to tell a woman's story I mean I feel like as a woman I walk through this world and I think well they might be thinking this mm -hmm, they might be thinking that and I, I, I don't know in general how, how often men walk around like that I think well, that's that was well, yeah feminine. And that was sorry but that, that was exceptionally clear from Finn from the get-go on this which was there, there was, there was never an attempt to villainize David. Even, even the absurdity of the therapists was was about like these are people who just made choices, and we can dig and dig and dig and figure out why they, these choices are made. Whether Stan is trying to make these people laugh, or but they're doing kind of the best they can with the information mm -hmm. and the cards that they have, and um, you know that that lent us a lot of of ability to go to somebody like Jeremy, who's an incredibly wonderful, beautiful, facile actor, and mm -hmm. tell him and tell him not to forget that there's his side of this whole thing too. And did you mean to do this? Do you want to hurt this person? And the thing that ultimately I found extremely interesting is that the linearity of this story came in the edit, really, where we kind of are divining principle was Jenny is continually calling up these memories now, whatever our present tense is, and what does she need now? What is the memory she needs to call up now? And how does that fit into this other timeline? And sometimes she needed to call up David as a villain, and sometimes she needed to call up David to question her opinion of David. And, and he sort of functions as both of those things at different times, because that's what Jenny needed in the re- you know, in the reinvestigation of her story, that's what she needed to kind of come to terms with. Um, and that's, I think, really just was Finn's writing and, and the fact that we assembled a really beautiful cast to, to try to achieve it. Yeah, and, and that was actually one of my questions of like, how much was um, the nonlinear storytelling was from the script? How much from the script changed into the editing? I mean, as we know, when we're filmmaking, we're sort of like just gathering moments and you sort of really tell the story in the edit suite. And, and, and so it seems that, that that was a part of the journey that you had with this, with this script, Sandy? Uh, I mean, if Elizabeth were on too, you would say, you know, because the <laughs> script was non-linear, you know, as it was written. Um, but then once we got into the editing process, of course, it opened up endless possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> as we started right, yeah. switching the stories around, they started equaling different things and different stories completely. I, I mean, we've had movies that were said completely different things and just 
Oh, we constant wanted, reshuffle. Yeah, it was a constant, like, getting it back to the original intention with maybe some reordering. So, like, how do we honor that original intention with maybe a little reordering just for narrative's sake and just for these new new awareness, you know, sakes and, since shooting? And so, yeah, it, it did take a little bit of finessing. Yeah, and, and, and kudos to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, let's just give Cheers. a round yeah, of applause. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gibb and, and Peter, yes. our main editors. Our yeah. yeah. Um, so during that editing process, and I think because, you know, there's four of you, it, and, you know, then you have your two editors, what was that like? That had to be challenging. There had to have been moments where, you know, I know it's sometimes I, just me and my editor, then you have your producer, and that feels like there's too many people here. Um, I was just wondering, like, what was it like in terms of, that editing process because I'm sure, you know, this is your story, Finnery, and you know what I mean? That it would be so personal. I and mean, I'm sure there were some scenes perhaps that you felt more of a deeper connection to that maybe that you felt needed to, you know, be part of the film. Were there were there moments like that you guys were kind of exploring as a team? And I guess your challenges around that. There were, yeah, there were quite a few challenges. We um the film, you know, cut cutters um Cutter Studios came on board to help us, and they—they're incredible. But they—they—they do their their main bread and butter is uh, commercials. So they do, like the bet, you know, like every year they have like three or four commercials at the Super Bowl, like the you know the Bill Murray Jeep oh, ad. I've heard of that. <laughs> the like a girl campaign, like they're just incredible, right? So each scene was beautifully edited, but we mm. wanted to play with the pieces. And it was like a Rubik's cube where we would solve one problem and then it would just, something else would not make sense. And they were so patient. Um, uh, we ended up, and, and this was something that I think Jack and Steve said early on, and I was really adamant. They, they really felt like once we had our first test screen, there was, it started, the film started with a flashback of little Jenny and I loved the scene so much. And to me, it felt like it was the heart of the film. And it just did not launch the film right. And it was heartbreaking. We tried so damn hard. We tried to, I, to me, I, I was like, this is the humor, this is the heart, we have to make this work. And we tried and tried and tried and tried. And um, the guys were trying to get me to cut it. And I remember picking up a book and I had like, my daughter was at a play date and I had like 25 minutes in a Barnes and Noble. And I think it was that in the blink of an eye. And he was talking about how he had to convince this one director that he was he's like, this is the heart, we can't cut it. And he's like, I had to convince him that maybe perhaps it wasn't the heart, that it was um, that it was an umbilical cord mm -hmm. and that it's not, it was very important, but it's not. And I was like, oh God, it's the umbilical <laughs> cord. I, like, cause I just love to see so much, but it really had to go. And that was, that was one of the last things. So we had um, Scott Gibney was our uh, uh, editor and um, you know, the guys did some editing too, and Steve taught himself, uh, what's it called? Yeah, I, it's yeah. avid. I, I would have to say, so, you know, the editing <laughs> process, when we first turned it over to cover, you know, it was like, they had it for a while, and then we were tr still trying to suss it out, and then, you know, a lot of the work actually ended up on Steve's shoulders. Yes, yeah, Steve. Steve took it for a very long time, mm -hmm. and Learn Avid and was editing and was learned Avid. Are you kidding? That's amazing. He, just, yeah. he picked it up, yeah. he got him a key, <laughs> and he went crazy. <laughs> and uh, you know. it, became, it became like the shining, though. By right? when I came, everyone was like, I see the first day. It was just like one scene done over and over. And, over. and then, uh, you know, so he took it for a while, and uh, you know, I mean, just really labored over the footage and everything, and then eventually turned it back over to cutters um, and they kind of, you know, went through it, it and tweaked yes. it and stuff. But I would say, you know, Steve, you were like- The lion's share of, of the, of <laughs> the editing fundamentals. master, yeah. you know, of that. And uh, it really shows. Yeah, but really, I mean, that's what that's what this film has a lot, you know, threaded throughout is, is as Finn, you know, said before, is that, you know, she pulled together some friends to make this movie and uh, that's what we all are. And so, uh, you know, that just allows for a longer time period to like get the thing done because everyone's doing it while living life and trying to like mm -hmm. give their, put their heart and soul into it. Uh, in, cutters included. I mean, like, oh, you know, they're, you know, cutters. working it in as Finn said, you know, with Super Bowl ads. So 
um, you know, we had to we had to touch down at the exact moment when people were available and um, and get it done. And and it was a lot of uh, you know reworking schedules and being able to like say, well, Jack and Infinity can come in this day, but now it's just Steve, you know, for these two weeks. And then it's, you know. I often but, joke, too. You know, I was like, you know, in the beginning, you know, Steve and I had such a, a set plan when we were going into production for the actual shoot of the movie. So we would say, oh, you know, this is, we would plan out this is what's going to happen. You're going to communicate with the actors. I'm going to communicate with the camera department today. And then we would switch that up based on who was shot listing for the next day. Um, but, you know, when we got into the post-production phase it was just kind of like let's go you know there was no like <laughs> who's doing what it was just kind of like a free-for-all of like this who is gonna can? be awesome yeah, and then it was can? like oh, because <laughs> <laughs> once you get out of production it's just like life resumes and you can like you know, work in your life with working, you know, yeah. in production, we were all hands on deck, four weeks, boom. And you, you go know. into these places and they give you food menus and you're treated like a king it's and, true, yeah. and you're just like, <laughs> you know, this is great. I want to come every day. And you're like, they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. How long was the editing process? It was, uh, <laughs> Six years. Of just about six. No, I think it was here. No, no, no. It was six like, years. Uh, we brought it back to them. You know, Steve and I. It was one of those things that the film was done and beautiful, right? But we were still feeling like something was missing, and we could not put our finger on it. And it was it was hard because of the nature of our large team to to keep going in and playing. And it didn't feel fair to them for us to be like, never mind, let's do, you know, which is editing, but right. we also, there was just stuff we needed to work out. So that's what was great. And Steve and I, we, we, we tinkered with, the thing that actually helped us thread everything is we literally were thinking that she was on her way to this trip. So we ended up, using that to really connect each memory and how it would make sense that this memory would come after this memory. And we were going to, we were considering reshooting like a subway scene of her on her way to the airport. And at one point, Steve was like, don't kill me, don't kill me. Don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> we shot like iPhone footage just to drop it in, right? And we loved it. We are gonna go back and really shoot it. And then Steve's like, don't kill me, but maybe we don't actually need that. And I was like, what? And he's like, we, we were able to really connect each memory. Um, and I think it makes sense in her emotional linearity that like, we may not need the crutch now. And I'm like, okay. So they just like, we lifted it. And I'm like, you're right. Like it, it all uh, fell into place. Um, we still had a lot to do. So we came back to cutters and we're like, okay, so we, we had this idea and we played a little bit and this, this is, this is what we, you know, and so they said, great. And then Elizabeth was amazing and gave us, she's like, I'm giving you this window and it's just you guys, let's bring this home. And like everyone's schedule was so nutty that the guys were like, Finn, it's you now, like it's you bring this home. And I'm like, okay. So it, because we literally had to talk on it. We were able to do it and we and at that point um because it was uh, scott gibney that we were working with mostly for over the years who was amazing and then um so then uh peter's i don't know how to pronounce his last name i've realized right now peter z, peter z. Peter. Peter z. He, he's huge peter z is huge everyone will know who he is <laughs> something like that i'm sorry peter i don't think i've ever said it out loud <laughs> but um we yes he's amazing so we, we sat in a room He's, you know, super young and, and is an incredible filmmaker in his own right. And so because we had the clock ticking, we were like, okay. So, and I pull out my notes and I'm like, Jack and Steve say this. Um, my heart is being tugged, but I think I agree with them. And he's like, I agree with them. It's gotta go. I'm like, okay. And, he goes, boop, 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 boop. and I'm like, oh God. And so stuff was really finally happening. The stuff that some, like the guys were kind of asking for and suggesting. suggesting. Uh, and then there'd be some times where it would, we would really be torn. And he would say, God, I kind of agree with Steve on that one, or I agree with Jack on that one. It ha if without that moment, this one falls flat. I'm like, yes, cool. And then we'd like make, so that last two and a half weeks that we were given was just, we finally really brought it home. Um, 
but it was a t it was a difficult puzzle. It really was, and it it ended up not being that far off of actually what is in the script, which is interesting. But That's we had to go around a lot to find that out to trust it. And um, yeah, I went. I was just looking through the script the other day, and I'm like, oh, it's really pretty close. <laughs> it took us a little while to come back around, but yeah. <laughs> I have like so many more questions I want to ask you and I know we're time is ticking on so I apologize for maybe if I'm like circling around here no, um, no but um, I really wanted to to note the supporting cast and I felt like when you see films and like it's such a large cast um, that like everyone had like what I like to call like a memorable moment you know like the cast was so stacked that I would just felt like, I remember like obviously, you know, your leads, but then all those supporting actors, like, I mean, I know they're like incredibly talented and then bringing like a wealth of acting experience to them, but they all were standouts in their own ways. Like there were so many moments, like I think of like the dentist scene or the moment, which is hilarious. Like it, I just love that, you know, it was so hilarious, but yet so painful you know, what she's going through, which is like, I just felt like there was like that kind of scene. And then you think of, um, I also really loved the scene with uh, the clothes swap. And, and, and there's just like such an, like, you know, and it was like those scenes kind of bumping up against each other where you had this intimacy of like how women support each other through these difficult times. And like, you know, I would never get through life without my girlfriends. And you really felt that you saw that intimacy and the support, but yet that moment where, and I believe it's you who, who played that woman who's pregnant, right, Katie? Like, you know, that you, like, like, you know, your friend is like suffering, you know, in pain, it's almost like painful to admit that you're having joy about something that you enjoy. And it was just this moment where I was like, oh my God, there's, there's like, you know, your, your female friends, that moment I think every woman has kind of been through where you want to support mm -hmm. your friend, but you know, it was just so beautiful. And honestly, I know that's the writing, but I also have to say that it's the directing and that, you know, I think it really, really was really like a special moment for me in the film. Well, and, and you know, just to bring it full circle in terms of like behind the scenes, I mean, you know, I, I, I've been friends with Finnerty, you know, for years before, you know, this script was completed and I was invited to those and attended those clothing parties. And, you know, the scene that, the scene that was written in the film was put in narratively and, and dialogue was created by the writer Finnerty, but those, those scenes happened for her and I was there for her then. And to be able wow. to like then, you know, produce, you know, co-produce a film, her film, you know, with her, and then, and then even like as a little cherry, be be part of that moment in the trajectory of the narrative, is like, I mean, there's so many layers of personal ness. You know, of course, you know, affinity is the foundation of that, but like, you know, it goes with the directors and it comes with me as well. Like, there's like an immense amount of like layers of like personal giving and affection and love like embedded in the film, you know, throughout. So, yeah. yeah. And it really shines oh. for me. You could really feel that in that scene. I mean, throughout, but I, in particular, I just felt that I felt like I was sitting in that, you know, living room with you, you know, it was just so beautiful. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was also, I was um, just, it's, it was important. Yeah. Oh, Mike. No, I was no, just going to say that, you know, I, from Finnerty, uh, you know, from from the from the very first time I read the script, one of the things that I was really drawn to was how those all of those people seemed like they had a story and a backstory, and there was not a, a whole lot of cannon fodder. Um, and you know, we know uh, as actors, and one of the things that I think we really wanted to try to achieve when something on the size of this budget and the kinds of people we wanted to to bring in and populate this movie with, which were gonna be a people who were swinging so, uh, you know, in their weight class, they were gonna have two lines. And meanwhile, they've been, you know, yeah. me nominated actors. And, and, and part of what we do is, you know- Kate Hudson. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's this sensibility of like, when you work on a, on a big movie, that it's like, sometimes you go in for a casting director, you never meet the director, they see pictures of you in clothes and you get on there, they don't even look at you. And there's like, there's no, 
sense of your belonging in this community. And I think from the start, we were like anybody who is doing us the solid and, and, and giving us their time and their spirit and their incredible talent, is a, it's going to have a ride is gonna have a day. And we're gonna to talk to you whether or not you're an extra in that way. And we're gonna to talk to you if you have two lines, 10 lines, or if you're Jeremy or Finn. And it's a great lesson to bring back up the food chain, I think too. And I've seen it with great directors that I've worked with before who come in and check in with you when you have two lines in a movie. Because the mm -hmm. more anywhere on the canvas is filled in with really heavy pigment, the more your, the less your eye wanders. And the more you just continue to go back to the, to the index of the story and what's pulling you through. And I, and I hope we achieved that because we, we certainly had the talent to try to make that happen. Yeah, I think that's what I was responding to is that, you know, even though, you know, we had these like incredible actors in like what would typically be considered smaller roles or your, your gay players, they were just incredible. And they just felt like, I don't know if you did like a lot of fun takes or if it was improvised or if it was all heavily scripted, but you know what I mean? Like it, it just felt like everyone was having a ball. And so then I could have a ball with them, you know? Like it just felt like it was just so, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of losing my words. It's, it's later here, um, but it, you know, <laughs> it just felt like, I don't know. It just felt, there was just such a spark to the scenes that, of uh, to everyone that it just felt like, you know, you just wanted to spend time with these people. Well, the script, I mean, the script was really about, I mean, like so much of the script was about that. I mean, of course, like there's the, the main narrative of, the, of Jenny and, and, and her husband, but, but really the script, the writing really allowed for so many day players, really so many like lovely actors to come in and grace the movie, you know, for a day, you know, and we it just, we just uh, yeah. had so much fun with it and, and really kudos and to also, Steve. And yeah, Finn Finn and Steve are very much connected in the, you know, Broadway world in New York City. So they also know, you know, a lot of these people personally. So when they're coming in, you know, they already have a relationship with Steve or a relationship with Finn. So it's kind of like, not all, hey, but yeah, yeah, but not all, but I'm just saying, which also made it nice. It's like to have an established background uh, really helped make everybody feel very comfortable. Yeah, and like it was a family, like you're coming on our set for this like telling of this like lovely thing that we're all here to tell and, and not, nothing was, you know, um, corporate in any way or, or like, you know, uh, ignoring of anyone in any way. Like <laughs> there's only so many people on that set and the people coming in are just gonna be part of that day and everyone was was really lovely. It really was a lovely experience. With all and we had good crafts, craft services and good catering. And that's really kind of, <laughs> yeah. puts everybody in a good mood. I'm so sad. I get the gummy <laughs> Oh yeah, the gummies. Yeah. yeah. What do you the need? Gummy bears. Gummy bears? Yeah. What do you need? Yeah. yeah gummy yeah. bears, Swedish fish. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Those what, were those were Steve's demands. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and on the good side, he gets both. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He's <laughs> That was fun. Um, so I think we're like running out of time, which makes me really sad because again, I have so many other questions I want to ask you, but I do want to say congratulations on your big win with Dances the Film. Thank you. Thank you. Right, that's amazing. Congratulations. Not Thank surprised. Um, and uh, I hope there are many more wins with this film. It was really, really a pleasure speaking with you. It was nice meeting you, you too. as well. You too. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Take care. All the best. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.